you've been out campaigning for Scott Stringer. Um, yes. So you're supporting him in the controller's race. Absolutely. And is that a loyalty to Stringer because you did endorse him well before you knew that Elliot Spitzer was going to be in? It, or, do you, or do you really think that Scott Stringer would be better than Elliot Spitzer in the job? Well, this kind of thing happens all the time. Somebody runs for an office, you endorse them, then someone else you know gets in the race. If you changed your endorsement, who would ever believe you if you have endorsed them again? So above everything else, it's a matter of personal integrity. Now, I've seen people do it, but I have never done it. Once I endorsed him, it wouldn't matter whether it was six months or two weeks. I'm sticking with the person that I endorsed. And the reason I endorsed him is because his service has been contiguous. He was in the, the assembly, went to the borough president's office, performed m miraculously there for eight years. Um, people didn't think the borough president's office had any value ever since um, it's not part of the board of estimate, but Scott Stringer showed how you can clean up neighborhoods and rid them of drugs and create employment opportunities at the same time. So. That's why he's my candidate. But Elliot Spitzer isn't just someone else getting into the race. I mean, he picked you to be lieutenant governor. As you were saying earlier, he, he not only picked me to be lieutenant governor, but at the time, he told me, the reason I'm picking you and not some others that have been suggested is, I'm looking for someone who I know can run the government if I'm not there. And sure enough, the real uh, economic crisis didn't hit when Elliot Spitzer was there. It hit when I was there, and I will thank him to my last day for having that trust and that faith in, in me. We're very good friends. We get together all the time. The page six writes about us having dinner and they call it the ex-governor's club or something. And um, I asked Elliot uh, some time back, was there anything he wanted to do? At the time he said no. When he came in, we talked and he said, I understand that you endorse Scott. And, and he even said, I understand Scott's a good candidate. So he and I have no problem. He, I'm interviewing him on Friday, and I wouldn't be surprised if he and I didn't spend a little time together after the interview, because we have a personal friendship. Well, you think he deserves a second chance of some kind, of, even though understanding that you're supporting his opponent, does he deserve a second chance of some kind of political comeback? Yeah, understanding that I am supporting Scott Stringer just for a candidate in his situation. Here's how I look at life. In some states, prostitution is legal. In some countries it is. Um, in, uh, in France, apparently you're not married unless you have somebody else. Uh, and, uh, you know, they do it a, a different way. But if you steal money anywhere, whether it's Las Vegas, New York, or France, people hate you. And so what I'm saying is people's personal issues have not thwarted the public from supporting them. This happened with Elliot Spitzer this year. For a while, Anthony Weiner was number one in the polls until everyone realized that he wasn't telling the truth about anything. So my view is that people can have a second chance when their problems are personal. But when you violated the public trust, taking bribes, offering bribes, stealing money, um, charging people to do the work you should do for free since you're a public servant, that's when the public doesn't forgive. Um, why do you think Spitzer's been doing so well in the African-American community? Do you think it's it's because of you, because he picked you as lieutenant governor? Or well, is, a lot of people have said that, that um, but I think it's not just me as a person, but it's the fact that I don't know another governor, including Governor Spitzer, that would have signed the uh, to rid us of the Rockefeller drug laws, although I honestly think Scott Stringer would. Uh, I don't know another governor that would have fixed our minority and women-owned business deficit where we were giving less than 5% of our state procurement contracts to women and minority-owned businesses, when you add them up, it must be 65% of the state. So um, there was a pardon panel I had for immigrants that had committed, you know, small crimes 30 years ago, and now uh, the uh, INS is going to deport them. I put a stop to that. There are a number of things that I did. For, uh, raised the allotment for welfare for the first time in 20 years. There are a lot of things that I did that no other governor would have done. I don't know if there was another governor. The other administrations looked at it because we talked to their councils that would have had the courage to appoint a lieutenant governor and let the Court of Appeals decide if it was 
uh, constitutional, and I was able to do that. And I don't know of another governor who would have gone against his own political ideology to make sure New York didn't go down the tubes like California, Arizona, and Illinois did. So people in the community, in the black community, and I think also in underserved communities of all colors, recognized that this was a different administration that dared to do things that others would not have. And what Elliot Spitzer had anything to do with it um, what is a positive that uh, he's relishing right now. And just one last question on this topic. Are you, are you being pressured in any way to come out and campaign more actively for Scott Stringer and not say as much, you know, good stuff about Elliot Spitzer, who, as you've said, is, is your friend for many reasons? I mean, are you feeling any political pressure to do this? No, I think that the Stringer campaign is well aware that I'm a person that tries to tell the truth. Um, and I don't have negative feelings about Elliot Spitzer. But in spite of that, I think that what's great about Scott Stringer is that there are no surprises. There are no skeletons in the closet. He's Scott Stringer. He is who he is. He's been that way for 30 years. He's also been my friend for 30 years. And he is, in many ways, very much like me. Doesn't have much money, but fights for people who have less than, than he has. And that's why I'm proud of him. And I think on uh, September 10th, he'll be the Democratic candidate for controller. Just a couple of questions as long as we've got you. Governor Cuomo, how's he doing so far? Just fantastic. Just, he has actually tamed the beast of Albany. And many of us tried. And many of us said we were going to do it. But he has done it. The legislature works very well with him. They've gotten a lot done. I think the legislature made a serious error. They should have followed Governor Cuomo at the end of this legislative session and shown the people that even if it was five or 10 of them, that's still a very small percentage. The others sat on their hands and didn't do anything. And the governor had plenty of, of pieces of legislation that could have been passed. Yeah, this was the first year that there were a couple of things, the um, that, codifying that, that the abortion rights and the well, campaign finance. And I that think was they once were again the Senate. stunned into inactivity after the scandals that broke. And even the governor couldn't persuade them. But I think when they take a deep breath, they'll be back in there working very cooperatively with the governor. And um, he resisted taking some of the pot shots at them when he was disappointed in them that, that others before him, including myself, did. And if I had to do it over, some of what I watch Governor Cuomo do, I stare at enviously because he is, um, uh, he just, handles these situations of negotiation masterfully. And the one last question you sort of alluded to, the corruption in the legislature. Some of the people that have been in a lot of trouble this last session, you worked with closely. Senator Smith, Senator Sampson, who were Democratic leaders, Senator Shirley Huntley. I mean, what do you make of all of this? And did you have any indication when you were there that there was something not quite right about them? Um, I mean, I might not go into names, but uh, Senator Huntley, the first time I met her, I thought that about her. <laughs> um, with, um, with some of the others, I was surprised, and particularly in the case of Senator Malcolm Smith, because he lost, and I don't think anyone remembers this, he lost his leadership as a majority leader of the New York State Senate because he fought corruption and wouldn't give a blank check of $750,000 to a member item to Pedro Espada, who wouldn't even tell him where the money was going for. And because of that, Espada and Montserrat, both of them are in prison right now, uh, jumped to the other side. Yeah, kind of ironic, I guess. So, you know, I just hope that that didn't uh, sour um, Senator Smith's view of public service to the extent of what his accusations are now.